Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. One of the things that I like to do in each of my introductory astronomy classes is to begin the class with the astronomy picture of the day from the NASA website that is apod.nasa.gov slash apod. And today's picture for September the 21st of 2019, well, it is titled The Tulip in the Swan. So what do we see here? Well, this is looking out towards the constella constellation of Cygnus, known as the Swan. And in it, we are looking at the Tulip Nebula. And this is an example of an emission nebula. Now, an emission nebula is one that is emitting light. So there are different types of nebulae that you can have. And an emission nebula uh, differs from something we often see around an emission nebula called a reflection nebula, which is the reflection of light off of dust grains around a star. Now, an emission nebula instead is actually the star, the the uh, gas that has been excited around the star. So one is caused by gas, one is caused by dust, and one, the reflection nebula, is just showing us the light of the star that has been reflected by those dust grains. This one is actually the excitation of hydrogen atoms. So when you have very hot stars that we classify as type O, and those very hot stars emit a lot of ultraviolet radiation. And in fact, they emit more ultraviolet radiation than they do visible light. So they are giving off primarily ultraviolet light. That's where the vast majority of their energy is coming. And that ultraviolet light is much higher energy than visible light. And what it does is ionizes or strips an electron off of the hydrogen atoms. Now those electrons then wandering around will recombine with another hydrogen atom. And as they do, they drop through various energy levels along the atom. And as they lose this energy, the energy has to go somewhere and it ends up being given off as photons of light. And those have very specific energies, meaning they have very specific wavelengths depending on the exact atom that we see. So hydrogen, for example, has a very prominent line that would be in the red portion of the spectrum. So when hydrogen is energized and caused to glow, we get a very distinct red color. Now looking at all of these for all of the atoms, each atom has its own distinct pattern of colors that it will give off, pattern of spectral lines. And that allows us to determine what things are made up of out in space. How can we determine? We don't get samples of things except for a very few uh, nearby objects within our own solar system. So how do we know what things like stars are made up of? And that is by studying the light that go glows from them. So when we look at things like this, we can take a spectrum, essentially split it into the colors of the rainbow, but instead of getting a what we call a continuous spectrum with all the colors you'd think of as a solid rainbow, in this case, we would only get very specific wavelengths of specific colors and even specific ranges of color. So not just red light, but a very specific wavelength of red light. And those patterns that we see allow us to determine the composition of nebulae, things like this, but also help us to determine the compositions of stars as well. And of course, what we find is that everything in the universe, just about, is made up of hydrogen and helium. And the very unusual objects, like our Earth, that don't have as much hydrogen and helium are the rarities. Almost everything that we see, all stars, and nebulae like this are all primarily made up of hydrogen gas, as we see in the image today with this red glow. So that was our picture of the day for September the 21st of 2019. It was titled The Tulip in the Swan. We'll be back again tomorrow for the next picture, previewed to be I, Sky. So we'll see what that is about tomorrow. And until then, have a great day, everyone, and I will see you in class.